Hello, Ealing. As creatures, we have five principal senses. Sight, hearing, <coughs> smell, taste, and touch. Although six, if you want to include the sense of humor. We use two of those senses when we take information from audiovisual media. And things, apart from perhaps modern immersive formats, have been largely unchanged in that regard ever since about 100 years ago when sound was first synchronized commercially in the movie The Jazz Singer. But moving cinema seats apart, the sense of touch has been largely absent from that. When we use technology to convey a sense of touch, we call this haptics. And the information that we receive in that regard is termed haptic feedback. Today, we're going to talk to you about haptics, and particularly when haptics works in tandem with audio, and how that might yet come to shape our futures. In virtual reality, we have a computer-generated world. And in that world might be virtual objects with which we would wish to interact. In extended reality, we use spatial computing to map the physical world around us and perhaps superimpose virtual objects upon it. But to interact with either of those, we typically need handheld controllers or hand and eye tracking is developing rapidly. But to touch and feel that virtual world remains elusive. It represents the next frontier. The sense of touch has two fundamental um, categories. Kinesthetic on the one hand, tactile on the other. So kinesthetic is to do with our limbs, uh, wavy field force, springs, etc. And tactile is more to do with things like temperature, vibration, and um, similar senses. So currently, haptic systems, haptic feedback systems can incorporate all of these things, but usually only one at a time. We haven't yet got to the point where one system will be able to give kinesthetic and tactile feedback. So here we have some images of both kinesthetic and tactile systems. You can see some of these are a little bulky. What we're really concerned with today is the image on the bottom right-hand side, and this is to do with a force feedback system. This is a force feedback system. It has two robotic arms that can apply pressure to the fingertips. If we map the surface geometry of a virtual object such that as we reach towards that object at the moment of contact, the robot applies pressure to a fingertip, it feels as if we're touching something solid. But that alone doesn't impart a complete sense of realism. To do that, we need to bring physics modeling in to emulate real world properties of real objects such as weight, momentum, inertia, center of gravity, friction, and more. And if we do that, haptics can produce a very compelling, realistic, and immersive experience, although realistic and immersive don't always go together. Oop, we <laughs> skipped out that bit. Now that we better understand about haptics, it might be good to talk about the state of the art of haptic audio research. However, we thought about this, and it's very conceptual at present as, as a boundary art science form, if you like. It's largely vibrotactile to do with vibration. So instead, we thought it might be interesting for us to speculate and present to you some of the ways that we think haptic audio might evolve in the future. So let's talk about video games. <coughs> video gamers have had actuators, rumble actuators in their controllers for 30 years. And they're usually triggered by some kind of audio or visual signal. They are vibrotactile. But what we're now seeing and what we think will happen in the future is we're also going to see kinesthetic interfaces beginning to turn up in game controllers. Haptics could be used to convey descriptions of sound to hearing impaired people so that they can better understand a game or a movie. We have something called audio description, which is a verbalization of on-screen narrative and this can give a better impression of the holistic experience for visually impaired people when viewing audiovisual media. However, that verbal description can clash with character dialogue. If we were instead to convey the audio description with haptics, we can have a silent third channel of information. And I have a PhD student working on that very topic. 
So telehaptics, this is really haptics at a distance. So you could imagine perhaps a, uh, an operator and a robot somewhere else, and they need to differentiate between, let's say, wood and plastic and metal. So we can do that haptically. We can feel the difference between those surfaces. But imagine now, if we also add a third modality, sound. Suddenly, we can hear the difference between those substances. And we know the sound of metal is different than the sound of plastic, which is different than the sound of wood. We have haptic training simulators, <coughs> excuse me, for, um, for um, pilots, for, doc for surgeons, for dentists. But audio is currently rather underutilized in these devices. Imagine if instead of sometimes just playing sounds, if the audio was interactive and reactive, it would make the training experience much more impactful and visceral. Let's talk about musical instrument tuition from a distance. This uses something called ha uh, haptic shared control. And again, we might imagine a saxophone teacher, I'm a saxophone player, we'd imagine a saxophone teacher here and a pupil here. So the saxophone teacher puts on their haptic gloves and in real time, from a distance, transmits haptic data to the student. So the student can begin to feel the very things that the tutor spent 25 years practicing, those special patterns, those fingering patterns. Museums and galleries increasingly put exhibitions online, versions of the exhibitions, to increase audience reach. But imagine sitting at home with that passive experience. If instead you could reach out and actually feel a sculpture, it would carry far more impact. Or we might bring multimodal art forms into the home through touch. Now let's talk briefly about virtual music performance and virtual music production. Imagine the idea that you are performing virtually, but you can touch the sound. As well as playing, you can actually put your hand out and manipulate that sound. Similar idea for music production, uh, where we can improve um, a user's experience with this uh, extra mode, haptic mode. That will help us indeed improve workflow um, and production itself. Imagine making a business video call when you could start the call by reaching out and warmly shaking the hand of your associate, or perhaps a personal call where you, you could hold the hand of a loved one. Then, mm. of course, we should be mindful of the potentially dark side of remote human contact. Real musical instruments are, of course, haptic by their nature. We can all imagine pressing the key on a piano or feeling the string on a guitar. And it's essential for musicians to have those sensations in order to play with proficiency and dexterity. But what about when we have a software musical instrument such as this thing? It's just existing on a computer screen. Its design is probably skeuomorphic, in other words, derived from the hardware precursors that it models or emulates. It's not very easy to control it with a mouse or even a virtual reality, con virtual reality controller. So alongside these things, for many years now, bespoke controllers have evolved ranging from electronic piano keyboards to arrays of knobs and buttons like this. But these things are always limited by one fundamental thing, the design constraints of physical form factors. So hackers, musicians and academics have spent some time trying to improve music production control. But of course, in virtual reality, without touch, that's actually a very hard thing to do. But if you bring touch into virtual reality, suddenly you empower the user to have a different route to creation of their music, and a more nuanced approach to the way that their music production might happen. Multi-user haptics offers a very powerful medium. We believe that we were involved in the creation of a world first, a bi-directional, real-time haptic collaboration environment that worked remotely. We did this in 2021. One of the problems we had to overcome was that the brain is incredibly sensitive to even tiny time delays between the act of touching something and seeing ourselves touch it. Any a de a delay that's too large um, will break the sense of immersion. So the internet just wasn't fast enough to deliver that, but we were able to use the inter inter-university, ultra-high-speed Janet network to deliver a completely transparent experience. And this short video clip will give you an idea of what happened on the day. does have sound. Thank you.
So <clears throat> this clearly wasn't a musical example, but we could, of course, extend this to a remote music haptical example. And we brought some crazy gear with us today, which may or may not work. And we're hoping we might be able to demonstrate, and this might be another world first, this idea. And of course, we're in the room together today, so we don't need internet, but we could do this at distance as well. Could we switch the video feed, please? We've chosen to model um, model uh, a tr an interactive music track as a flat, cloth-like, rubbery material. We've done this because it's very apparent where about in the material we might touch, and importantly, how hard we might press. And physics modeling allows the material to distort and give us visual feedback around the amount of pressure, but crucially, physical feedback akin to playing a physical instrument, like the guitar string. These abstractions also serve as a test bed for a future 3D version, which requires more sophisticated human control, but offers a much more powerful response to that. It has 200 data points mapped across its surface, and early experiments demonstrated to us that it was quite hard to produce replicable musical control. So we trained a neural network, which is a form of artificial inter intelligence, we trained it on key interaction gestures, so that even getting faintly close to those gestures allowed us very accurate and very precise musical control. So, let's see if it works. Have we got laptop audio? Nope. Okay, we thought that the robot um, might do this, as you may have gathered. Um, we built such a precise emulation of, I'll go back up here, we built such a precise emulation of a human musician that we programmed it to experience stage fright statistically, yeah. occasionally. <laughs> However, anticipating this yesterday, we threw together a video demonstration of us doing it in the lab, which the crew upstairs are going to play for you now. You sound as well? So, maybe not as visually entertaining as your favourite band, but it's great fun to do. Um, hopefully, we've given you some insight into haptics, and particularly how the future of haptic audio might affect us and go beyond the boundaries of today. Thank you. <laughs>